A suspicious package evacuates the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. We're live from the scene with the latest. Good evening and thank you for joining us on NBC 5 News at 6. I'm Craig Smoller. And I'm Cassie Nelson. Oregon State Police and several local law enforcement agencies around the state, including the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, receiving suspicious packages today. And officials say some of those packages contained an unknown substance. NBC 5's Jennifer Elliott is live at JCSO headquarters in Central Point, where both the FBI and hazmat crews are on scene. Jennifer, what can you tell us? Well, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office is usually the place that investigates crime scenes, but today it was the crime scene. If you take a look behind me, there's actually a stairwell with a door at the top, and that's where hazmat crews first tried to make entry into the sheriff's building to take out this suspicious package. Now, we don't know the nature of what the package was or what it contained, but we do know, as was mentioned, that this was not an isolated incident. This is part of a statewide threat. A captain here tells us that numerous agencies received similar suspicious packages, but he couldn't tell me which cities. He also couldn't tell me who sent them or why at this point in their investigation. Now, when the threat became evident, though, he tells us everyone working here was evacuated. That was about two o'clock. Anyone who was not involved in the investigations actually went home. And in fact, the sheriff's department was closed up completely. No phone calls could be received here. Everyone was outside of the building. Now the hazmat crews did take an exit the building a little bit after 530. They brought out that package in a red bag and then they started cleaning their tools. But again, we don't know what was inside. And we are told that dispatch was operational during this entire event, so emergency calls continue to be responded to. I'm live at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Jennifer Elliott, NBC5 News, back to you. Jennifer, thanks very much. Well, one person is dead, another in the hospital after a rollover accident in Gold Hill this afternoon. Oregon State Police shut down the I-5 northbound exit 40 ramp just after 1.30. Troopers say the driver of a large pickup truck was exiting the interstate but traveling at a high speed. As you can see, hit the guardrail, rolled multiple times in the dirt and then landed up on the, uh, on the ramp. Both victims had to be extricated from the vehicle. The extent of the driver's injuries are unknown. The passenger was pronounced dead on scene. No other vehicles were involved. The ramp is back open tonight. Well, local law enforcement agencies are issuing a warning tonight after they say a man posed as a police officer over the weekend and pulled a driver over. Not only was his act illegal, it was also potentially dangerous. NBC 5's Kyle Averman spoke with police about the incident today and joins us live with the story. Kyle? Yeah, Cassie and Craig, the man who posed as an officer ran off when the driver was smart enough to realize something wasn't right and began questioning him. Police say this story serves as a good reminder to always follow your instincts. <laughs> Those dreaded lights, it's something as drivers we hope to never see. But over the weekend, one woman did see those lights behind her somewhere near Antelope Road in White City. Thinking it was a police officer, she pulled over. She became suspicious and eventually confronted him uh, and wanted to call 911, at which time the individual left the scene. The case ended without anyone being hurt, but that's not always the case. So how do you tell if the person who pulled you over really is who they say they are? Let's start with the vehicles. We're always going to do more than just the windshield lights. There's typically going to be uh, the lights that are going to be in the grills or in the headlights, which would be very difficult for somebody to, to try and emulate. And in this day and age, uniforms are no sure thing. The badge, the duty belt, the radio, you know, they'll probably be talking to the radio. You'll hear traffic potentially. We can't say that nobody will ever acquire some of these items, but the likelihood is very low. If you are still uncertain about either, you can ask to see their identification card or tell the officer you want to call 911 just to verify who they are. The most sinister cases are the ones where there's usually some type of motive of a sexual assault behind the whole thing, and that's, a, that's our biggest concern because that has happened in the past. Unfortunately, we'd never want to see that happen again. Impersonating an officer is a punishable offense and is considered a Class C felony. As for the case over the weekend, the suspect is described as a 40 to 45 year old man with an average build and thinning hair. If you have any information on this case, call the sheriff's office. Live in studio, Kyle Lieberman, NBC5 News. A California man led police on a high speed chase in a stolen pickup truck pleaded guilty this morning. 24 year old Matthew Darren Duck will serve 20 days in jail for auto theft and attempting to elude. Duck stole a pickup truck in Wairika on July 10th. He was arrested after a chase on I-5 and Highway 66 that hit speeds of up to 110 miles an hour. 
Duck was also sentenced to three years probation in order to pay over $1,000 in restitution. A judge has granted a request for a new attorney from a Klamath Falls man charged with murder. James Forshe is accused of killing 42-year-old Emery Connor. Police say Forshe shot and killed Connor in April of last year at a Klamath Falls rail yard. The judge said he would appoint a new lawyer next Monday. Forshe's trial is scheduled to begin in late September. Wildfire season expected to pick up as the fire danger level jumps from high to extreme tomorrow in Jackson and Josephine counties. A spike in the temps and dry conditions are prompting the Oregon Department of Forestry to set some new regulations. As of tomorrow, all power equipment needs to be used before 10 a.m. to cut down on the possibility of man-made fires. Fire danger just naturally goes up a lot when you get into temperatures, I'd say from mid 90s into the hundreds uh, just becomes oven hot. ODF's fire prevention specialist says we can expect the danger level to remain at extreme until we get at least half an inch of rain across southwest Oregon. Another beautiful day outside but get ready for some very hot temperatures later this week. Meteorologist Adam Kolpak live now with a first look at our forecast. Hey Adam. Hey Craig yeah we've got a Beautiful forecast right now, but things, like you said, are changing. We're going to be dealing with some uh, possibly record high temperatures coming up in the seven-day. Take a look outside right now. It is beautiful, and uh, we have plenty of sunshine with a temperature at 84. The relative humidity at 24%, a northwest wind at 10, and a steady barometer at 30.07 inches. The wind will be a factor also tomorrow, and also with the dry conditions. That fire weather threat will be on the high side as well. 79 for Brookings. We have 75 for Klamath Falls and 70 for Lakeview. Wind out of the northwest at 12 in Brookings. North at 24 for North Bend. That wind gust, though, out of the north at 32 for North Bend. And north-northwest at 23 for Montague. We're basically dealing with clear skies now. We're also going to see some more moisture in the seven-day. I'll have the full details in just a bit. Back to you. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. The Boy Scouts of America began allowing gay children into the organization in 2013. And right now, they're allowing gay leaders. Today, the organization's National Executive Board voted to end its decades-long ban on gay scout leaders, saying the policy was, quote, no longer legally defensible. While the national ban is gone, local scouting units can still reject gay applicants if hiring them would violate the unit's religious beliefs. The scout executive for the Crater Lake Council says if a gay man or woman is qualified for a leadership position, they have no problem hiring them for the job. That council oversees troops in southern and central Oregon, as well as northern California. Well, this morning, medical marijuana dispensary owners line the walkway to the Jackson County offices. Applications in hand. Today was the first day businesses could apply for permits to operate in the county. As NBC5's Taylor Ryan reports, who was first was the hot topic among those waiting in line. Who's first depends on who you ask. I've been waiting out in this line since 5 o'clock this morning. The farm to table representative has been here at some point since Friday. The order in line may sound petty, but for these medical marijuana dispensary owners, but it matters who's first. This line formed outside Kelly Madding's office, the director of development services for Jackson County. We don't, we have not ever had anything like this to the best of my knowledge. In all, four medical marijuana dispensary owners waiting to turn in a type three pre-application to operate a medical marijuana dispensary within the county. And because it's first come first serve, Whoever gets in first wins. One of these facilities is going to lose out. Noah Soule queued up to represent Rogue Valley Remedies in Phoenix. He claimed to be the first in line and says it's the county's limitations that have made the application process a competition. Our county is a little bit unique in the sense that we have these sort of long, linear, commercial um, roads. Matting says that's why commissioners decided on a half-mile buffer zone between dispensaries instead of the state's 1,000-foot separation. Soleil says he's in a race with Farm to Table, a dispensary that's been operating without a county permit and has received code violations. Which they have taken full responsibility for. Farm to Table also says they were first in line something that had to be proved by checking security cameras. But determining order was just the first step. It's complicated. Now pre-application conferences will be scheduled. Applications will then be accepted along with a $3,000 fee. Even then, it could be a while before we see dispensaries operating legally in the county as appeals can be made for approved applications. I anticipate that there may be some appeals and some jockeying. In Medford, Taylor Ryan, NBC5 News.
Taylor, thanks. Matting says it could take about 180 days for an application to be approved, but the appeals process makes it hard to tell exactly when a business could be up and running legally. Results are in from the Republican straw poll at the Jackson County Fair. Donald Trump received 61.9 percent of the votes, which included first, second and third choices for candidates. Scott Walker came in tied for a distant second with 27.5 percent, along with Ben Carson. Rand Paul, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz also received more than 20 percent of the votes. Jackson County Republican officials say they hoped the poll generated enthusiasm for the 2016 election. Not even 24 hours after the Jackson County Fair ends, the teardown is nearly complete. This is what the Expo in Central Point looked like this afternoon. Official numbers are still being tallied, but Saturday saw a record number of people, 25,000 people. Organizers say with the free parking, nice weather and concert series, they have received a lot of positive feedback. Fair officials are asking for your feedback so they can make next year just as successful. You can download the County Fair app on your iPhone or Android and rate this year's fair events. The cities of North Bend and Coos Bay are looking to improve their roads with a five cent per gallon gas tax. The tax, which has not officially been proposed by either city's councils, would be dedicated to street maintenance. City officials say a typical driver buying 300 gallons of gas a year would pay about $15 more in fuel taxes, about $1.25 extra a month. The proposal was developed by a citizen tax force and city officials hope to have it on the November ballot. Before then, both cities are inviting resident feedback with an open house from 6 to 8 Thursday at the North Bend Public Library or by participating in an informal survey online. Pan Air has announced they will be providing commercial passenger service from Klamath Falls starting this November. The Alaska-based Peninsula Airways made the formal announcement this afternoon. Pan Air plans to provide twice-daily trips to Portland on weekdays with daily flights on weekends. The Crater Lake Klamath Regional Airport has been without passenger service since June of last year. The TSA will soon begin setting up a security post at the airport. Japanese high school students are visiting the Rogue Valley for a week of healthy competition, culture, and of course, football. 46 Japanese students from the region's all-star team are in Ashland for the biannual Pacific Rim Bowl. Throughout the week, the students compete in a number of sports with Ashland high school students, as well as travel around the region. It's all leading up to the big football game between the two teams Friday night. We came here to uh, learn about American culture, as well as, as um, having a good competition with the guys and also exploring a uh, good camaraderie with it. Friday's football game kicks off at 7.30 with pregame ceremony at 7, all of it taking place at SOU's Raider Stadium. This is the 27th year of the program, making it the 14th Pacific Rim Bowl. In two years, Ashland High School students will travel to Japan for the next game. Now for a look at what's coming up tonight on Your Place at 7, we check in with NBC5 News' Art Barron. Art, what do you have for us tonight? Well, you know, most of us like firing up the grill and cooking a nice steak, burgers, or brats, right? Of course. But that simple backyard tradition is creating quite a stir with a next-door neighbor. Two brothers were cited because neighbors complained of the smoke, but that's not all they're facing. We'll have that tonight, Your Place at 7 o'clock. Interesting. Wow. Yes, I know. It's we, pretty smoky out there. Right. I mean, we enjoy, you know, cooking out, right? Mm -hmm. It's an American tradition. <laughs> but there is trouble in paradise. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Look, looking forward to it, Art. Okay. Thanks so much. All right, the search continues tonight for a missing eight-year-old girl in California. And they need your help. Why investigators are saying they don't think she ran away. But first, how one stranger is using show, social media to bring hours of happiness to a book-loving boy. Next. Visit KOBI5.com for your latest news and weather. Plus, join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. NBC5 News, your place.